I just wanted to share some of my thoughts. It's my privilege to be here. TEDx Sairam, I wanted to thankful to them and all the organizers and distinguished chairman. Before I start, let me share some of the thoughts about the climate change. Climate change is the background where my topic is really focusing towards that. The green building technologies related to thermal comfort conditions to the buildings. This is where I am wanted to tell you some of the things what, where I did lot of work for the past 20-25 years. Here especially, that was you know very well, the building industry consumes a lot of building materials such as brick, cement, steel, what not. So many things which it has got the contribution of almost 22% of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So the way the greenhouse gases are getting increased, that has got a lot of impact on climate change. You must have heard about the Kyoto Protocol, afterwards at the summit, and so many other areas and where, wherever we talk about it, climate is changing and then global warming is taking place. Greenhouse gases are emission is creating a lot of problems to our ecosystems and ecology and environment is getting deteriorated. In case of the same change going on, then we may not be having anything to show to our coming generations. This in the Kyoto, Kyoto Protocol specifically mentioned that all the countries are supposed to have the action plan on green buildings. The action plan of in India, what we have on climate change, it has been given and then you know where they will, depending upon the importance of the topic, the Prime Minister himself is chairing this particular action plan for climate change in India. So in that area, there are several issues. One is how best we can able to use the solar energy. Second part, what you can see, the ecosystems of the Himalayas also been targeted out of eight major headings. Third one is solar conventional energy, how best we can able to use in the building industry at all. Like in the buildings, first we have to understand what exactly the conventional energy we are going to use and how extent it is going to be really going to benefit to the indoor air temperature swings. More the temperature we have, we have to have the comfort conditions. For that, we may go for the artificial gadgets or otherwise, this kind of an energy which we are going to consume it at all. Like in the building industry, just I wanted to tell you, there are three areas where energy is consumed. That is the thermal, where we wanted to have the thermal comforts. Next one is the illumination energy, where lot of contribution, like by the lights, what we have in the night time. And even in the daytime also, we may use the lights in some of the areas where you have got the controlled environment. Third one is embodied energy. These are the three major courses. Embodied in the energy in the sense, the materials what we use in the building industry that will be manufactured by use of so much of carbon. So much of carbon units we are going to burn to prepare and to manufacture such materials. These are the three major areas if you have got the focus and if you can able to do the best where we can able to save the energy. Once you are saving the energy in the sense like where you can even indirectly going to reduce the emission of the greenhouse gases. Next. So like if you see that building, the commercial building consumes almost 32% of the total energy what we are going to produce in India. Similarly like 45% for the residential buildings. Because these are the two areas in case if we can able to focus and bring some energy efficient buildings so that we can able to reduce a lot of energy so that that can be used and put into the different use for the production point of view. Next. That's what I'm telling you in the Kyoto Protocol. There are the eight strategic areas are there. That is one is the solar energy, enhanced energy efficiency, sustainable habitat and conservation of water and green India and strategic knowledge platform for carrying out these kind of an options. All these areas directly or indirectly contributes and gives an insight and kind of stimulates an architects and engineers to work in the building industry to reduce the maximum extent of the greenhouse gases and the reduction or reduction to lead to what, what we can able to say about carbon dioxide. So in what way we can able to do. Next. There are, these are the few areas I just I thought of sharing it with you. Building typologies. Building components we have, walls, roofs, windows and all the things. Where and what component and what material we can able to use so that the, where the heat process takes, takes place from the outside to inside to the conduction through which indoor temperature swings can be controlled. Outdoor ambient air temperature, in case if it is there 41 degrees Celsius, then how we have to bring the comfort conditions by using the local conventional materials. Now that non-conventional way, before we start an understanding about the non-conventional materials, so next. There is a one solar thermal model we have got. 
four year analysis you know very well once there is a non steady state conditions are prevailing there you can go for the four year analysis using the four year analysis changing the different type of materials like brickwork in the different typologies you can work out in case the outside non state non state conditions of the temperature swings and then how indoor air temperature swings are getting worked out now our aim is to bring the indoor air temperatures almost closer to our comfort conditions there are certain materials may not be in a position to give so much of comfort condition but at the same time we will be knowing in understanding about the gap through which we can able to say that whether it is affordable discomfort or not so this is ex just same thing so the for a building like the model what we have taken then this is the mass air transport that is a temp like you know the way the heat conduction takes place derivative of the temperature with respect to the time because every hour the temperature is changing this kind of equation through which we can able to say how the heat is blowing into the building in different forms through the walls that is a total heat flux to the walls windows and the heat loss to the ventilation qv and heat loss to the isothermal mass that the materials of the furniture what we have and then in case even still the floor also takes the heat this is the entire thing is the heat balance equation specific to the thermal comfort then in case the comfort condition is not sufficient enough there is a last item you can see plus or minus hv whether i have to heat whether i have to cool that depending upon the temperature depending upon the climatic zone this kind of a model we can able to work and understand the indoor air temperature swings next so we model just to operate that model we have taken that is square meters of the building space and then wall thickness of the 230 and then seen the window opening size is 3 square meters that is the 10% of the space and then we have processed the model in this model next there are typologies just first we have to see and understand what is the conventional building that is a normal brickwork and then having the just no plaster both the sides and the rcc slab next second typology of the building having the same kind of a thing with having the insulation in the roofing third and the hollow blocks in case instead of going for the brickwork i'll go for the hollow blocks and see how the heat transfer takes place from the outside to inside fourth then this is the one what we can see is the veneering a stone wall a normal wall having got the stone cladding in one side another one is some kind of an insulation to the roof fifth there is a cavity a rat trap bond you must have heard about it different type of a walls and the envelope of design we are giving it to the building to understand how the temperature swings can be worked out by the model what i said to you depending upon the air temperature swings are available at outside sixth then even otherwise the same material of a conventional thing with a rat trap bond and insulation with the insulation how the things can work because these are the six varieties and categories of the things we can able to work out once we know very well about the radiation count at outside which is going to fall on the surfaces on the sun path on the base of the sun path diagram and next one is the opening size what it is going to take the heat through window and then the isothermal mass has been counted and otherwise also like the heat conduction process what we have seen and then next and these are the several six items whatever we have seen that is the item what we have told you the way we can go for the fourier analysis and finite difference method then we can process and we can understand next and these are the, uh, the attributes depending upon the kroc values every material has got its own thermal properties conduct k is the conductivity rho is the density c is the specific heat all these parameters we can able to process into the particular program then we can understand what exactly the what this particular these six categories of the typologies is going to give it to me whether it is going to give the comfort conditions or not that can be seen next so you can see the typology 4 and typology 5 the ambient air temperature what you can see ta ta is the final one and this particular one is the one what is almost coming closer to the comfort conditions the typology 3 and type typology 6 and typology 5 with the insulation and the cavity walls of the rat trap bond it means the convention other conventional systems definitely it requires some quantum of the heating load either in the heat cooling period next and the heating period but whereas in the winter the variations are not much but whereas it could able to identify and just we have seen and worked out and validated with the actual practical data and understood that it is not really that extent of giving to the comfort conditions next so if that is the case how much load i have to go for it so this is the process like i started increasing the heat load for heating period then then that way i could able to see where this is only that 1. 1.5 kilowatts of the energy i have to add it to bring it to the comfort condition next for the winter next 
Then another one is whether uh, non-conventional other systems, when we look at it, thermal mass, depending upon the window and the slit, how it is going to function, this particular area also we wanted to focus. Next. This is where when we have just made the window and slit, then the kind of a result, at the temperature variations at the window level, temperature variations at the ventilator level, this is the conventional method where the thermal buoyancy works out. With this equation, we can able to clearly understand how the heat air is getting taken out and the cool air comes inside. This is the one way of trombe wall system also functioning in this. Thermal buoyancy, how it is contributing to the temperature. Next. So we can see this. There is a window opening size and the stilt opening size. Both the things varied. And then almost 10-20% of the window opening and 3% of the window opening size could able to contribute minimally 2 to 3 degrees of the temperature variation in the summer season. So that's how we can able to say. Next. And another option what we can see in earth air temperature always constant of 29 degrees throughout the year that has been identified by the CBRI and even the way we have made the model also gives the same kind of result. When the tunnel moves with the same temperature and then it opens to other end, if in case if you can able to pump the air, the air can take the earth air temperature and it can able to give because earth air temperature is almost like 29 degrees. In India, composite climatic zone like Delhi, it has required some quantum of the heating in the winter, some quantum of the cooling in the summer. So 29 degrees when the ambient temperature is 41 degrees, when you are getting the 29 degrees delicious air from normal conventional fan, which the tunnel runs and gives you so much of respect the moment you enter into it. It is almost like air conditioner. Even in the winter also, if there is an outside temperature is 8 degrees Celsius, when the 27 to 28 degrees Celsius of temperature, if you are getting it, then you have got lot of respite. So this tunnel works very effectively. Next. So these are the things we have worked and used in some of the factories. It has given a best result. Only problem is, next. Here this is a system like the way we have to run the program and how this moisture rate and then how the net heat transfer, both these partial differentiation equations can be integrated and bring the result. And then in this result, there are three components are there. One is the axial, horizontal, vertical, and then the three-dimensional system is working out. There we have worked out the finite difference method. Then we could able to get and integrate it to the model what I said to you in the first. These things, next. And these are the attributes and uh, parameter inputs we have processed it, next. And then we can see at the temperature gradient is here. One that different types of the earth air tunnel lengths we have got, how the comfort conditions can be done. And then we have fixed the diameter of the diameter of the pipe. Line. Then we have increased the uh, length of the pipe. Then how, what exactly the better comfort conditions it is giving it to us. That has been seen. Overall 80 meters length of the pipe with a diameter of the 41 centimeters. And then the flow of 2.83 cages per second could able to give comfort conditions even the winter as well as in the summer. Next. And then otherwise, these are the comfort conditions. Another one is what we have to look at it. There is a specifically building materials itself consumes a lot of energy for manufacturing. So why we cannot focus that area also to make a building energy efficient. So we can able to see the roofing and terracing options. We have got several options like conventional RCC, pillar slabs, reinforced brickwork, channel brickwork, code slab, jakachuru, and even including madras terrace. Similarly, the way we go for the waterproofing systems and then lime water terracing. These are the several options coming up to the cavity PVC type and cavity lime concrete. These are seven options we have seen and worked out how the energy content is going to be used for manufacturing these materials and using the different options. Next. So this is the one way we can able to see these are the filler slabs. Next. And these are all the filler slabs like where the compression reinforcement part can be removed. Only steam reinforcement can, part can be used effectively. And the total design, one way we can save, another way can give the comfort conditions. Thirdly, we can able to save the manufacturing energy. Next. These are the precast channel units. Next. Channel units only. Next. And these are the core units where you will take out the entire slab openings. And then you work out how the energy is going to be used and for manufacturing. Next. Next, this is a Jakarta roof. This is a Madras terrace. I think most of the people knows about it. Next, when we compare it all the time, like when you see the conventional RCC slab and non-conventional other systems, when we look at it, almost like a channel unit slab is consuming 75% of the energy as compared to the normal energy. Next, and different type of the terracing options with these options. Next, 
and then then we can see mud muska terracing because the consumption of the mud itself no manufacturing it is not taking much of the count when we use it as a layer then it has got lot of cooling effect and as well as the energy the manufacturing energy is almost going to the zero so that way it has given only 25 per, 20% of the energy it is consuming next overall conclusions i wanted to say these are the actually energy efficient systems for a building we can able to see the way we orient the building that is one of the important where you can able to reduce on the base of the sun path to take the radiation into the surfaces two next one is the shading analysis by way even you design a building in such a way that where it shades wherever it is required third one is thermal mass construction that's what i am telling you when you know about the kroc values of the particular material what you are going to use it as an envelope that gives you lot of information through which we can able to control the indoor air temperature swings wind towers which nowadays the new concept of the wind towers earth air towers these are the things which catches the wind and makes the indoor temperature comfortable and even non air conditioned buildings also may be comfortable for air conditioned building the load can be reduced and another one is a roof garden system this is what i have not emphasized much but it will be very much helpful shape factor solarium attached greenhouse trombe wall these are the several systems we have out of which what finally we are going to do the consumption of the energy once you reduce it the greenhouse gases and then carbon dioxide emission to the atmosphere these things can be reduced because the industry of the building is consuming a lot of energy through which we can able to together contribute even the knowledge is to everyone makes your architect you to are ask the architect or engineer to give the energy efficient buildings to make it to specific reference to climate change thank you